Hi, this is Adam, and this is a devotion for the Lent season. I want to talk about something that most Christians, I don't think, give too much thought to, and that is what we call the triumphal entry. Having taught the Gospel of John for a number of years at a local Teen Challenge Center, it dawned on me some, not too long ago that what we call the triumphal entry, at least from someone who has no knowledge of the Bible, that that is, had to be one of the most ridiculous scenes ever. Who in the world would be happy that their king came in on a donkey? This is, some, this is the stuff of lampoons and parodies. What a crazy, crazy thing. If you wanted to make fun of Jesus, if the Roman soldiers and the Romans wanted to make fun of this king of the Jews, they would of course have him riding in on a donkey. A, a stubborn, stupid animal as he is um, typically uh, portrayed. So. But why did Jesus ride on a donkey? So in the, the prophecy, which is given in Zechariah 9, and by the way, Zechariah lived some 400 years prior to Jesus coming to the earth. It says, say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you gentle and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. And so the point is of him riding on a donkey is that he's gentle, that he's humble. And this agrees with a number of other scriptures, some of which come to mind are from Isaiah 57, verse 15. For thus says the high and exalted one who lives forever or who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell on a high and holy place and also with the contrite and lowly of spirit in order to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. And then in Isaiah 66, verses 1 and 2. Thus says the Lord, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where then is a house you could build for me? And where is a place that I may rest? For my hand made all these things. Thus all these things came into being, declares the Lord. But to this one I will look, to him who is humble and contrite of spirit, and who trembles at my word. So God who created everything, who is all-powerful, yet within himself there's humility, there's gentleness, there's meekness. And Jesus said it in a different way. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We live in Dearborn, and one of the things that we often find ourselves uh, clashing with, or that there's a contrast and, and a clashing of ideas, in Islam, they teach that God is all-powerful, but in a way that does not allow God to have any type of humility within himself. And so there's this whole idea that what Christianity presents about God is something that is weak, something that is um, unworthy of the Creator. But what Muslims miss is the fact that what the Bible teaches us is that God is love, and inherent, innate within love is humility, is this gentleness, this meekness, and it's really not a sign of weakness as it is misunderstood, but is actually a sign of strength. And the very thing that, or so many things that Muslims, if you were to talk to them, wish they could have, such as the assurance that their sins are forgiven, can only be found in how God is described in the Bible. God is love, and humility is part of his nature.